kadi tino kuchinga miza inemfaro basa randa kaita ne vamwe vangu rinonzi chishona reimagined. I will take you through my work that I've done, and uh, this has been for my master's thesis degree. I am Taurai Valerie Mutake, and I am a graphic designer by profession, as well as a visual communicator who has started exploring the multidisciplinary part of things. So yes, I am a multidisciplinary artist from Zimbabwe, Harare. Beautiful. Tarai Valerie Mtake. Yes. Take us on this journey. First, let's know a bit about how you got into the University of Arts, Craft and Design. Okay. Correct? Yes. All right. How did you how did you decide to come study? What inspired you to come to Sweden to study this course? Okay. I was studying, or rather I was working in Zimbabwe and I felt like I needed to do a bit of work that was out of my uh, own creativity that I needed to push. And through that I started applying for scholarships and I applied in different parts of the world but I got the one here in Sweden as well which uh, was here to come at Kosvak, the University of Craft, Arts, Crafts and Design. So this is how I ended up here and I wanted, in my application, I really just wanted to um, come and do work that was meaningful to myself as well as to my people. Yeah. So how has the journey been for you? It's been an interesting one with its ups and downs, a bit challenging here and there being in a different environment as well, totally different environment, different cultures. But it's been uh, an amazing journey of rediscovering myself as a creative and doing work that I want to also like direct and make it meaningful. So it's been a great journey with its own ups and downs, but it's been a great journey. Worthy of note is that the fact that there are almost 200 students graduating or doing their thesis today, or uh, this, this past uh, two weeks, and you are the only black. Um, how, how does that make you feel? <laughs> well, I you're the only African. <laughs> I'm not so so hundred percent sure that I'm the only only African African, but I have um, checked. Uh -huh, okay. Yes. Um, how do I feel? I feel like we are getting somewhere. We're getting recognized in certain parts of uh, Sweden. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I feel like I've. Put, uh, stepping or rather I've I could say I could be the first one or one of the few that have shown their what Africans can do and what Zimbabweans can do to be specific as well exactly I, I really wanted you to mention Zimbabwe <laughs> because we're talking to a smart intelligent Zimbabwean woman here yes. is this evident of the fighting spirit of the Zimbabwean yes it's very much evident so you've always been this, you know, first among equals, you want to be the first, you want to be, do things at the best, yes, the best of your knowledge, of, the best of, of your abilities. Ability. Yes. Well, this is great. Thank you. So, part of your work I saw today, which was very amazing, was the fact that you are writing the Shona language. You're actually, the, how do I put it, you're designing the alphabets for the Shona language, which has previously never existed. Talk to us about this project. Okay, so uh, this project was inspired by just wanting to create something that was truly and authentically um, Zimbabwean, uh, Shona, Shona. Because myself, I am a Shona person, and I come from, like I said, Zimbabwe, and particularly my culture, speaks Chishona and I wanted to see how best I could explore any avenues of my language being represented in terms of writing. I'm, I'm surprised that the Shona language was never written. It's only said. How, 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 how did that happen that the language doesn't have alphabets? I mean people from back then had a way of communicating. Uh, 
which was probably also through rock paintings and different kinds of representation. Mm. Through my research, that's what sort of like I've seen and figured out um, that some inscriptions are on what we call divination tablets, which is called hakata. Mm. Um, there's different ways of communicating visually that were done then. It's just due to colonization when the alphabet came and were told to read and write in a certain way, uh, people started adapting to that and that became the norm. Mm. So for me it was creating something that represents what our language actually says and means. So this whole idea is deemed decolonizing the Mazimi. It's uh, so the first part of things is decolonizing Madimi and Madimi. Madimi, yeah. Madimi. Can you can you say it again? Let me hear. Madimi. Madimi. Yes, which okay. means tongues or languages. Languages. Yeah. Wow. And basically, it started with a project that was done earlier on in South Africa. And then I came to Sweden and started working more on the Nguni symbols, which I then created a writing script myself and a guy called Tapiwana Shegarikai, um, who helped me create a writing script based on, uh, on that. But then later on, I decided I needed to create a writing script that was much closer to home, which was a Shona language, um, was, yes, for the Shona language and I decided to create a writing script for the Chishona. Okay, just so my viewers don't kill me if I don't ask you this question. How many alphabets do you have in the, have you created in the Shona language? So far created, uh, I've kind of lost count, but there's at least more than 50 that I created. Wow. With, um, with Pule as well as uh, Rutendo Gonesa. Okay. And we collaborated, we decided to collaborate when I also heard that uh, Richendo was working on hers too, also with the help of uh, Sebastian as well. So These are other researchers are scattered all over the world? Yes. But they are Zimbabweans? Um, they are Zimbabweans and one South African. So we worked together to also create the second part of this project. Hmm. What are you trying to achieve with this project? What I'm trying to achieve is to sort of decolonize. Okay, the you said you said that before, but then how how is this how is this alphabet going to be used? Because now it's wanting to create the alphabet, is another thing to apply them. How how are they going to be applied? Um, firstly, I would like the government itself to consider using our own sort of like way of writing when we do. Uh, certain things or even writing hmm. so learning that and teaching that in the curriculum and making people know about our how we could possibly make or I mean how we could possibly write our own language so for me it's just the for from my end it was more of like just creating for that and then maybe it can be implemented in different kind of ways for people to know about um, the writing system I, I think you should meet uh, Arikana Chihombori Kwao. She will love this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then you wrote a book. Yes. And uh, this book is not square shaped, it is round. Can you show us this book? Okay. Um, this is the book. Well, wow. Wow. Which is still wow. work in progress. Okay. But um, basically, what I created here was. Um, because I've been studying a course that is norm creative, hmm. uh, I wanted a book that was obviously out of the norm, out of which the norm. you can clearly see here. Yes. Not many round books are there. But I've never seen a round book. Yeah. <laughs> because of how um, everything that I was looking into when I was researching is that the Shona culture or everything, most of the things or objects, shown a material culture that's used is circular in shape and that inspired me to keep my, um, my project circular in shape. Hmm. So that's what, we, uh, what inspired the book. And once, once you open, for example, it's a full circle instead of just hmm. um, 
square shape uh, or square rectangular. Shaped, yeah, mm. like the normal one we are yeah. used to. So, wow. for example, this was like my mood board, and you would see here um, the circles that inspired this yeah. project and how everything was like circular. The hari, which is the pots. Yeah. The hat, which is also like shown here. Yeah. Everything was just like circular in shape, and that's what I wanted to sort of like achieve. Hmm. I wonder how this book is going to look on the shelves when you you're done with it. I wonder too. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. So, are you going to take us through, give us a, a tour of your project, and sure. explain to us some of the designs you've made for your thesis? Yes. Good. So here we have the first part of my project, which is what I've called the past. And the past is when I was creating, I created uh, a writing script that was inspired by the Nguni symbols. And these symbols were, uh, were used in Southern Africa. And part of the project was to revive these symbols and make people know about these symbols. So after that, I decided to create a writing script that was inspired by those symbols. Some of the symbols like that are seen behind is a symbol of joy um, in the Nguni symbol writing. And the red one uh, around there is uh, of hope, symbol of hope. And then this script was, um, it then made the, the word Madimi in that uh, script as well uh, that I created in 2022. And uh, yeah, so here is what you see is the uh, hope symbol, the symbol of hope in the Nguni okay. um, symbols. Okay. Yes. Yep. And then uh, the ones inside? The ones inside, when we go further inside, so here we start a bit of a journey of like me showcasing where this project has come from mm -hmm. and uh, here is also similar to what you just saw outside yeah. is the paintings that I did that were inspired by the symbols as well so um, these are part of the vowels that uh, the vowels the vowels so this says a a e o and then u is not here the, but okay um, yes uh, these were the vowels that were created by this writing script Hmm. Basically, yeah. Okay. And uh, on this here, we have the older work where the symbols are being played by children as a hmm. way to revive uh, a way of writing yeah. that was used uh, in Southern Africa, the Nguni symbols, hmm. which this project has or is being shown in IKEA Museum, uh, wow. and touring around Sweden. Uh, showcasing uh, the revival of this writing system. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Yes. And what's inside? Inside is you are welcome to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Inside is a. This is beautiful. Thank you. Um, here inside you will see the new work which I've called the present. The present? Uh, yes. So there's hmm. the past that was outside. Outside. And then the present, which is what we have in here, here uh, which is uh, the writing script. The writing scripts. Yeah, my uh, friends did, hmm. which um, tries to show a different way of writing. It shows here, uh, Chi Shona reimagined. Yes. And these are the alphabets. Yes. All in circles. Yes. All in wow. Circles. How many alphabets again? More than fifty. More than case. fifty. Uh, this is just a preview of the few of them wow. that we have on a computer at the moment. And all of them are different. Yes. Wow. <laughs> this is going to take me a while to master. Now, viewers, you see all this. These are all the alphabets that she has created for the Shona language. Isn't it wonderful? Wow. Hmm. And can you take us through some of the alphabets? I think these are the alphabets here again. Yeah, so on this page are the vowels, and then you'll then see as it goes around 
uh, for me it was just projecting on a book uh, mm. showing the different vowels that are found within like the, the, the language mm. as well as the consonants. Mm. So showcasing what um, they sound like. So as you see on this is the side where A would be there, mm. A would be the E, mm. O, U where it shows all the consonants that have those vowels. Let me ask you, maybe you can, can you say, can you recite the vowels without looking at the pages? Yeah, sure. Okay, give us the vowels. Uh, no, no, give us the alphabets without looking at the pages. All the alphabets. Can oh, you recite, can oh. you recite? I can give you the give, uh, vowels. Give us the vowels, okay. Give yeah. us the vowels, let's, let's A, see. A, E, O, U. Hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Those are just five vowels, right? Just five vowels. And then every other thing is a consonant? Yes. All wow. of this, they just fall under those sounds. Yeah. Beautiful. And then what's the future? The future is where this project will go and live in. And um, I would say, I don't know where this project is going to end up being mm -hmm. but I certainly know that this project is going to grow and it will go to unimaginable places mm -hmm. and we will see where that takes this project but the future of this project seems and looks so great hmm. thank you <laughs> we cannot wait for this future Yes. we at Afro Community want to say we are very proud of you we stand by you and we'll make sure that the world hears about you. Thank you. Thank you for doing us proud. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome.